welcome back to day two of this week's doodle therapy. Um, it's great to see everyone in the chat. Uh, my name is Alice. I'm a I'm an artist based in San Francisco, and I'm your host for this stream. Um, so hey to Anna, Stephen, Sam, Jack in the chat. Um, it's really fun to always see where everyone is calling, dialing in from and just to say hi in the chat. So if you're joining us now, um, feel free to pop into the Behance chat and just say hi um, and you know where you are joining us from and um, maybe even share uh, one word to describe how your day is going so far. So I'm Alice. Um, I'm your host for this, this next hour um, based in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I would say my day is going, uh, going very, it's very pleasant so far. I just had a really delicious uh, lunch that was curry and I'm ready to just get into um, some drawing. So um, hey to Rochelle, to Matt, to Jack from Ohio and Mike Howdy from Nashville, Tennessee and to Tia. Um, good afternoon, um, good evening, good morning, depending on where you're joining us from. And uh, yeah, welcome back to day two of Doodle Therapy. If you're new to this stream, um, or if you just want a refresher, this is basically a time and a space where we can just get together for an hour of really chill, relaxing drawing um, and draw together. Every week we have a uh, different drawing prompt. So it's what I'll be working on the screen, but it's also a challenge um, for you guys to draw along with if you want to at home. Uh, the stream is interactive, so I'll be taking in inputs from the chat and um, you can always feel free to ask me questions about my process. And also every week we have a doodle giveaway. So if you end up drawing along with the challenge and submit your doodle, then um, for example, this week, I'll be picking one winner to receive a prize in the mail. So thanks to everyone for submitting their doodles this week and i um, excited to start drawing with all of you. Um, hey to uh, Stephen from Birmingham um, in the UK, to Alex, to uh, Shnivasar Rao, sorry if I mispronounced your name, feel free to correct me, uh, to Julian from Atlanta, uh, Bobby from uh, Canada, Natasha, hey again, um, Brian. Um, it's great to be back. It's great to see some familiar faces. Um, so before we dive into uh, today's session, just a little bit about me. I am your host uh, for this doodle therapy stream. And like I mentioned, I am an artist and a muralist based in the San Francisco Bay area. Um, some of my work is up here that you may have seen in the past. Um, you know, some of my work that uh, you may have recently seen around if you're based in San Francisco, um, would be at places like the Asian Art Museum, Phil's Coffee, Coach. Um, and uh, I've also done a lot of illustration work for various tech companies in the Bay too. So yeah, welcome again. And um, hey to Brittany and hey to Alexander um, and to Ville from Columbia. So as you can see from my work, one of the themes in my uh, illustration work is animals. And so that's what we're going to be up to today. Um, the theme of this week is all about drawing animals and specifically drawing about fantastical, uh, you know, surreal, whimsical creatures. Um, and so yesterday, um, this is where we left off with the stream. So yesterday I walked you guys through how I typically approach drawing new animals. So um, I typically pull up some reference images um, from Google, Google Images. So as you can see, in this case, um, I you know wanted to draw a deer, so I pulled up some references. And then I'll just try to break down the animal into um, simple, basic shapes. Um, this is like the sketch that I started out with, but you can see, you know, underneath, I had also started to draw, um, you know, to draw the shapes um, and uh, kind of like the, the structure of the animal. And that's something that you can do if you just take a look at the reference and try to simplify what you see. Um, and uh, a person who really does this um, super well as reference that you can also look at as another illustrator is um, Charlie Harper. He's really, really good at breaking down um, organic shapes um, into these really simple geometric 
uh, structures. So um, after I draw the sketch, then I'll usually um, you know, go ahead and start filling out the shape portion. So um, this is where we left off yesterday. And um, if you are curious about more of the process, you can watch that stream. But basically I ended up just sort of blocking out the shape and the composition. Um, and um, so this is where we left off yesterday. And um, you know, I ended up just filling out the rest of the composition a little bit more. And so if you're following along and also drawing your own animals, um, I would love to see, and I would love to hear about your process. Um, basically what I did here is I just continued the rest of the drawing using that same technique and approach. And um, I wanted to give a special thanks to everyone who um, submitted as well. Um, our winner for this week's giveaway is um, Tanya, who submitted via Instagram. Thanks to Tanya. Um, they worked on um, this really cool collage illustration of um, elephants and flowers. So Tanya, you will be winning um, or receiving in the mail a um, special pin that I made. Um, and I'll be contacting you about your uh, mailing address and all of that after the stream. So thanks again to everyone for um, submitting and um, for drawing along too. And so today what we're just going to be doing is to continue along with the rest of this illustration. So as you can see, I um, started to draw, you know, the character a little bit more. Um, and now I'm just going to start to actually have, I feel like, get more into the details, which I feel is the fun part of this. So you can see that I already, you know, outlined some of the sketches, but I was really excited about making this deer have um, a lot of like flowers in its antlers and maybe instead of it having normal antlers, um, they would end up being like branches. Um, yeah, so hey to uh, Tav Kier again um, from the chat and um, to Alexander, I'm still gonna give you another shout out. Um, uh, thanks for joining again and I remember seeing you here last week. Um, yeah, and I also loved your submission, so thanks Alexander. Cool, so I'm just gonna dive right back into this piece, but you know, while we're sort of on this topic, I'd love to hear about how everyone's day is going so far. Um, my day has been, been pretty pleasant. Um, I ended up installing a curtain rod, which was a bit of a frustrating experience, um, just like working with the uh, different tools and stuff, but I am satisfied now that I put it up. And um, if at any point in this process it feels like I might be going a little fast, feel free to stop me. Um, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the process or even my setup. So um, I usually get a question or two about this, um, so just to kind of preempt it. I am currently using um, Photoshop and I am on a Wacom tablet. Um, it's basically like a monitor that I'm drawing on and it's uh, 20, the 22 HD uh, version. Cool. So I'm actually really excited for this part. I kind of saved it um, for the stream because I knew that it would be fun to do. Um, so. Basically my approach is I will usually do a quick sketch. Um, as you can see, this is really rough sketch of how I was thinking the flower positioning and placement could be. And then after I do that, I'll usually then using that as a, just like a reference, um, I'll then start to actually fill in the rest of the shape. So as you can see here, um, I have kind of marked out the places where I want the leaves to go. And, uh, and now I'm going to just fill it in. to hear from the chat and I'm curious about what everyone is excited to be um, working on this week whether it's 
art related or a personal project or a client project, um, I always ask this question and it's really fun to hear all the different projects and uh, skills um, that people are trying to learn. Um, for me, I actually am going to be, I think I'm going to make some um, Animal Crossing DIY uh, clip-on earrings. So I'm ordering this quick dry clay from Amazon and then um, some like chains um, and the earring part. And then I think I'm just going to try to craft a few earrings. Um, hey to Amy Sailor HG for joining in the chat. It's great to see you again. Um, so as I'm drawing this, you know, I'm really just trying to think about the feeling of this like ivy like leaf that's just wrapping around the branches or the antlers and um one of the reasons why i wanted to make this week's theme all about um drawing fantastic creatures is because um you know all of us we're more confined than we normally would be where most of us are sheltering in place and you know we can't necessarily have the types of adventures that we would normally have so um it sometimes it feels like the you know adventures that i can really have are through my artwork uh since it's not like we can you know go fly off to another country right now or you know do a lot um outside of our immediate homes so i just thought like why not try to have those adventures but just in our creative worlds Ooh, natasha is making some um animal crossing fan art right now a vector drawing of cat in a cute pose i'm curious about uh who is cat um i have not run into any cat animals uh yet on animal crossing but they are very cute. Oh, I actually ran, I ran into Kid Cat, um, the one that's in the, the racer's outfit. Um, Bobby is painting some skateboard decks. That's so cool. Um, that's awesome. I, uh, if, you know what would be really cool is if you ended up doing a, um, a photo shoot with them with like a skateboarder doing tricks and then you know when they do a little flip or something they uh, you can kind of see your skateboard design flip up um that is really cool bobby There was a really interesting conversation in the chat yesterday about um, different things that people have been doing to stay grounded and, um, you know, sane during this quarantine time. So I'm curious if um, anyone in the chat has any like mindfulness tips or practices that you've been trying. Um, I was talking yesterday about how one thing I like to do is just to get like a different perspective on things like even something as simple as going into the backyard and like sitting under a tree um makes me feel just like instantly better it feels like it's almost chemical you know um so yesterday after our stream we went for a quick like hour-long drive which was really fun Um, and so um, I've also received questions about this in the past as well. Um, so just to kind of preempt them, I've um, sometimes people will ask about how I like to organize my layers and um, I'm not like super organized. Um, I like to have each color on its own layer um, or like each element on its own layer. 
so that I can really easily easily manipulate the color. For example, if I want to change, you know, this one leaf over here, then it's easier for me to just change it versus um, having to redraw it. And then um, the way that I've arranged it is um, I'll then group all the layers under, you know, specific um, grouping names like this is the deer or the grass, etc. Um, cool. Uh, hey to Rochelle, who's joining from Canada and is working on illustrations for a neuroscience education video. And uh, the stream is inspiring uh, them to move from Illustrator to Photoshop. Cool, yeah. I think that there's lots of pros and cons. Um, and I'm really curious if, if people in the chat have, you know, their own preferences for this, but I really prefer to use Photoshop just because that's, I feel like I can move a lot more quickly um, when I'm drawing uh, like freehand versus working with uh, vector, which is more, it feels more mathematical to me. Um, something that um, I also wanted to highlight is um, in the stream um, last week, we ended up raising $1,500 to uh, various nonprofits that are doing work to support the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, so uh, some of those nonprofits included bail funds, um, the NAACP, and um, I wanted to just, um, I think that it was just, it was a really powerful experience because it's just cool to see that our community can come together um, on these types of types of um, social issues, and this isn't just about you know drawing or design. It's just about relating to each other as a community um, and as fellow humans. So um, every week, um, I want to highlight a different um, non a different uh, you know organization um, that is. Uh, supporting Black Lives Matter in some way that's doing work that supports it. And so um, this week I wanted to um, send you guys over to this website, um, justiceforbriana.org. Um, let me just send it in. Um, basically, um, and I dropped it into the chat just now, but basically um, Brianna Taylor um, was killed by, uh, in her sleep by cops that came into her house and um, she has not, uh, her, the cops that did that have not been um, charged yet. So um, this link will send you to a petition um, and other ways that you can support as well. And um, that is the uh, link that I would love to, you know, direct your attention to for this stream. Um, I think that's really important for us to um, stay active in this. Um, I've seen people saying like my timeline is going back to normal. It seems like the movement, you know, is over, but it's not. And I think it's up to us to make sure that issues like this, um, you know, stay at the forefront of um, our conversations. So um, if you have a sec, please uh, check out that link and support if you can. So I think I'm pretty happy with how this um, this vine turned out. I'm gonna add some flowers later, but now I'm gonna just move on to the next antler. Oh, and thanks to Jeffrey for dropping in the link to Bobby's um, skateboard designs. I uh, can't take a look right now, but I'm really excited to see what they uh, look like. So thanks. And um, 
Hey to Joshua, uh, jo Jose Manuel from Remote. Uh, it's great to have you in the chat as well. I feel like this leaf is kind of jutting out a little too far. Um, yesterday we talked a little bit about, um, you know, the different inspirations that all of us carry with us from our childhood. And I feel like I, um, I, br I bring that up because I feel like I um, draw a lot of these animals and kind of like fantastical scenes because one of my biggest childhood inspirations is um, Studio Ghibli. And so yesterday we ended up, you know, sharing different um, forms of media that really inspired you guys as kids. And so I'm just curious to pose that question to the chat again. What are some books, TV shows, movies that really inspired you as a kid that maybe you can even see the um, impacts of that inspiration in your work today as an adult? Um, so I, uh, like I mentioned, I really loved a lot of, um, I would say anime that's like in the fantasy realm. So Studio Ghibli, even Pokemon, I feel, um, or Naruto, which is a um, extremely long running Japanese anime that ran for over a decade. Like, um, and it was about uh, these like ninjas who with these like superhuman skills. And um, I think that that's both that style of Japanese illustration, um, as well as the subject matter of um, these really fantastical creatures has a lot of impact on my work today. Um, oh, Kriti has mentioned that a couple of her friends, uh, or their friends, sorry, are um, working on a uh, nonprofit fundraiser, and that's awesome. Uh, props to your friends for doing that. It's um, Render the Stress Curve. why um, I was really excited to draw the more um, fantastical parts of the deer drawing today is because um, I feel like it's a really fun way to just get into the flow state of drawing where I'm not thinking too hard about what I'm drawing, I'm not trying to have it be perfect, um, but I'm just kind of flowing with it. I'm just making shapes that uh, are fun to me, you know? I'm not I'm not thinking too hard. Uh, yesterday I was drawing a lot from reference, um, you know, where I was trying to break down the character uh, of this deer um, into simple shapes in the anatomy. But um, today, you know, now that I've gotten that basic structure down, um, I'm thinking more about like the story around the deer um, and the scene. And um, for me, that's, more um, of just like flowing with it and seeing what shapes come out. Um, Bobby says that they've been using Fresco a lot lately too. Um, yeah, I also started, I actually um, worked on a book cover in Fresco, which was um, actually really fun because I did it on my couch and I, also, I really appreciate it that there's no layer limit, which is usually my issue when I'm drawing on my iPad, is running out of um, layers because I, I like to um, basically have as many separate layers as I possibly can for each of my elements. So yeah, technology these days. I never thought I'd be able to literally draw a book on my book cover on my couch, but here we are.
Um, oh, hey to Anna. Thanks for joining us. Um, Anna is all, Anna's an amazing illustrator. Um, and she also does a stream, um, on, um, Behance. You should totally check her out. Um, Anna, uh, please just remind me when your stream is regularly again. I always just, I think I always pop in after my stream because I'm all, I always just check Twitter and then, um, you know, you've posted like, oh, the stream is now. So, uh, feel free to let us know when your streams are, because I think if people enjoy this stream, then uh, you totally would enjoy Anna's drawing stream. Um, Kriti asks, how to make sure the illustrations don't look too pixelated when reduced in size? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so one thing that I try to do is I will think about um, the size that I want the illustration to eventually be in. And um, for, for me, I like to have it at least be five by seven inches because um, that's the size that I have, that's the paper size that I have for my printer. Um, and so if I wanna make prints out of it, then that's a good size. Um, but you can also think in terms of pixels if you're gonna share something on like Instagram or something. Um, but then the, the trick that I always try to do, um, which is what I learned from Roman actually, Roman Muradov, who was also on Adobe Live, I think a few years ago, is I always just try to draw um, my with my DPI as pretty high. So if something is just gonna live in the digital world, um, it just has to be at like 72 DPI, which is the resolution for your screen. But um, I like to draw things at 300, sometimes even 450 DPI, because then I can um, really easily, you know, scale it up and down and, um, you know, if something is going to just live on the screen, if I draw it at 4, 450 DPI, then I have enough leeway to, you know, how, how much more? It's like almost like 5Xing um, the size. Um, but if you draw it at like 72 DPI, at like exactly the smallest size that you will eventually need it in, um, it's possible that, you know, you may have to size it up and then it'll be pixelated. So that is one thing to just keep in mind if you're working in um, Photoshop. But if you are working in Illustrator, since that's a, uh, a vector, then you can size that up and down. Um, oh, cool. Anna's stream is Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 4 PST. So um, like right after this stream on Mondays. Um, and I saw actually a great question earlier and I'm sorry if I missed it. Oh yeah, Natasha said that they were working on a client project on their iPad and they ran out of layers and they wanted to scream. That has happened to me so many times. Um, so I was actually really pleasantly surprised um, when, you know, I was just doing my thing on the iPad and did not have to uh, switch to computer. Or the worst is when you merge down and then uh, you merge your layers down because you have to. And then um, you, have to change something, but then you have to like redraw it. Um, I think that works well if maybe that's part of your process. But for me, I'm really used to having this granular control over all of my layers. And so it can be a frustrating um, part of that process. Cool, uh, let's see. Oh, welcome Stella. Thanks for joining again. Um, and ooh, we have an interesting convo in the chat. Uh, Thanks to Amy, who's sharing their favorite art anime. So that's a really interesting question to the chat is, um, what is your, what was your favorite anime or graphic novel or comic series growing up? Um, either in terms of the actual series or just in terms of the art. So I think my favorite anime growing up or my favorite, you know, graphic novel, graphic series, was definitely Naruto. <laughs> uh, I can't believe I'm like sharing this on camera, like on a stream, but um, yeah, Naruto is uh, this like amazing epic saga about um, this young boy named Naruto who is training to be a ninja in his ninja village. And it's really good. It covers a lot of um, topics of like self-growth, maturity, um, coming of age, reaching your goals, friendship, loyalty. Um, I see that uh, Amy's favorite art style is, 
oh, or I think their favorite artist is Rumiko Takahashi. Um, and I would say my probably my favorite art for anime is probably Sailor Moon, just like the TV series. But I love hearing about, you know, an entire generation that was inspired by a really popular, um, basically being like fans of a really popular series. Like I love to hear when a lot of my designer friends will often share how they got into design. And for a lot of people, it seems to have been Neopets and just like customizing their Neopets pages. So it's, um, it's like very heartwarming to just think about how being just a fan of um, something actually impacted someone's um, path in life. Um, I also was really into like Zanga. <laughs> so uh, I remember like customizing my page and that's how I learned about just like basic HTML stuff. Um, oh, cool. Anna, own, you guys own the pain arc, which is um, an entire uh, narrative around this um, bad guy named Pain, but um, he's kind of like this tortured soul. Uh, so like, is he really bad? I don't know. That's, you know, it's kind of like what the series is exploring, I feel. Um, and Full Metal Alchemist. I have never watched or read that, but I've heard that a lot um, from friends who seem to really like it. Uh, yeah, Naruto fans in the chat. Um, uh, one, one that I wanted to watch when I was young was, um, it's called like One Piece or something. Um, but I was afraid of getting too addicted. I, I think I have a very obsessive personality with, um, these kinds of shows. So, and I had already gotten hooked on Naruto. So I was like, I, I don't think I can afford in terms of like time and energy. I can't afford to like get obsessed with another another manga. So uh, I never, I just never read it. Oh, Anna says watch it. Uh, okay, um, maybe I will actually. Maybe, I think this is kind of a good time to like get into that, that show that you had always wanted to watch but just never did because you know, you were busy and if anyone is thinking about starting Naruto right now, like hats off to you, because that is a, I mean, I think they had like over a thousand um, like is issues of it. Um, and every week is an issue. So there, yeah, there's many. Um, ooh, Powerpuff Girls. Yes, um, I love Powerpuff Girls. I think I designed this pin, um, it's kind of hard to see, but I think a lot of my like girl power types of piece, pieces of artwork are inadvertently kind of inspired by Powerpuff Girls and Totally Spies. Um, wait, One Piece is still going on? Are you kidding? That's, that's crazy. One Piece was going on when I was in high school. That was like 10 years ago. Okay, so I guess, was there another one that was really short? Um, it was like maybe only 20 episodes or something, but it was a really popular manga. Um, is One Piece the one about the pirates? Oh my gosh, Stella remembered about Doraemon. I love Doraemon. Um, for those who don't know, Doraemon is a very adorable cartoon about this boy with, um, is it like a cat? It's like a space cat named Doraemon. And, um, you know, they live in a normal society. I think they live in Japan, but Doraemon is kind of like this supernatural cat who can pull an infinite amount of things from his, like, kangaroo pouch. Um, so they'll sometimes get into trouble and so Doraemon will just open up his pouch and he'll pull up like, you know, an umbrella and they'll just blow away, you know. Um, and uh, one of my studio mates has a, um, she's very handy and prepared and responsible and so she has a um, 
a uh, set of drawers that um, has like, um, if you're working on an art project and you suddenly need a supply, like chances are she probably has it. Uh, like exacto knives, um, tape, hot glue gun, you know, different types of paper, markers. And so we actually call it hammer time, which is the name I think of Doraemon's um, pouch thingy. Let's see, um, Kim Possible. Yes, a classic, of course. I'm loving this walk down memory lane. Um, did they have a, a live action Kim Possible? Well, I love Kim Possible and actually my cell phone ringtone is the Kim Possible communicator beep. The beep, 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 beep. So, um, oh, Doraemon is a robotic cat coming back to the past to guide this boy. Um, and One Piece is has been going on since high school. Yeah, I, you know what I sometimes think about? I, I wonder what it's like to be an anime artist at one of these serialized, um, long running anime uh, or manga series like uh, Naruto where or One Piece where they come out with um, a new chapter each week. Um, which actually, if you think about it, is a really fast clip because you're developing the story as well as executing on the art. Um, if anyone has any insights on life as a manga artist or as a... Um, manga assist assistant to a manga artist. I would be really curious. I found this, um, a long time ago, I found this blog by this girl who worked as a um, manga assistant and it seemed like their schedule was really intense. Um, oh, Cynthia asked you a question. Do I use a pen tablet? Yeah, I'm using a Wacom with this uh, pen. And basically I'm just drawing directly on my computer screen. Um, ooh, we see, um, I, I see Anna saying Avatar, best show in Teen Titans. Actually the other day, my <laughs> uh, one of my friend's friends was talking about Avatar and being confused when they started watching the manga because they thought it was the James Cameron movie <laughs> where <laughs> there's like the blue aliens. And so they were like, where are the blue people gonna come up? And um, I literally like laughed for like five minutes when I, when, uh, when he told me about that. Um, let's see. Yes, I'm really curious. Anna says that manga artists can really easily burn out. And I can totally see that because, you know, they're producing um, work on such condensed schedules and it's kind of like unrelenting, you know, it's like weekly. So, um, oh, hey, Sarah, thanks for joining. Um, and so I'm a little curious about life as a manga artist. Um, yeah, so um, just to recap, you know, if you just joined, this week is all about drawing fantastic animals, just using your imagination and going on, you know, an adventure with this type of whimsical, surreal, fantastic creature. Um, and so yesterday on day one of the stream, I showed how I'll often use reference images like this and um, will break it down um, to try to draw, you know, try to learn from it anatomically and then to draw my own character from that. So I showed how I, um, drew and sketched this deer. Um, and this is where we ended up yesterday. And so today I am continuing and I'm adding a little bit more of that like magical aspect now that we've gotten the, um, the actual, um, you know, the, the, the structure, the main structure down. Um, one idea that I had actually was um, in addition to having, you know, this um, like the antlers being tree branches with flowers. I was thinking that maybe the, um, the, this deer's, um, body could also have this very interesting pattern. And, um, I was playing around with having it 
almost seem like it's glowing. Um, so I think for that to work, you know, you probably have to have more, more pieces that are, um, that are less, less visible too, just to kind of make it more obvious. Um, yeah, to answer your question, Kriti, I think um, for me, it's, it's like a little bit of both. Um, I think that having the constraint of a really strict schedule actually helps me um, just, I, I then just start, you know, working almost on intuition, you know, you're just, you just, you just gotta go. You, there's no like double, uh, sorry, second guessing. Um, and so, I mean, I, I feel like I've painted a lot of murals um, in really strict, tight schedules. And I'm usually at the end of it, um, you know, I'll just like collapse in my bed and I'll be like, how the heck did I, did that just happen? You know, like, how did I just paint that thing? <laughs> and it just like happened. Um, so I feel like the constraint can be helpful sometimes. Um, but I think that over time, if you don't like check it, if it's just, um, continually really intense schedules, um, or a schedule that's super tight, um, for no good reason, really. Like you could probably mitigate it, but it's not being mitigated because maybe the project's not well managed. Um, then that's where I would have an issue. And, uh, I think burnout is more likely. I think, um, as artists, it's really important to know your limits because we often hear about how, you know, certain industries can push artists to a really unhealthy degree where you end up, um, you end up pushing yourself. You might even physically hurt yourself with your wrists or your hands. And um, I think it's really important as artists to know, you know, your limits and to stand up for yourself because when you do that, you're also standing up for other artists that um, your client uh, may work with, and you might even be educating someone who simply just might not know about, um, you know, what's an acceptable timeline to um, give to someone. And um, Julian, uh, the way that I rotate my canvas is I press R. Uh, you can also look at this for this um, symbol in the sidebar, and then that allows you to just rotate. And then to escape out of it, you just do um, escape. Or um, what I, I do, I just do C, which is crop, and then I just get out of crop mode. Um, thanks to Mudita for joining. And um, even if you're joining now, um, even though we had the um, challenge already, which um, the winner is Tanya this week, um, you're still totally encouraged to draw along, and I would love to see your um, drawings. You can upload them to the Photoshop Discord or um, uh, tag me at by Alice Lee on social media, like um, Twitter or Behance. Um, you can message me there or Instagram. I'm curious if anyone ever, when they were younger, like wanted to be a manga artist or a comics artist or you know, when you were younger as a kid, did you ever have a dream job that was in the arts um, in that vein? Like, I read a lot of Naruto manga, so when I was in high school, I was, I would sometimes think, you know, what would life be like if I worked on this manga? Um, and uh, I think that that probably subconsciously influenced, you know, how much I really enjoyed art and now that I do that for my job. So I'm curious if anyone else has had um, a similar kind of dream job that was fueled by the fact that you simply just really love, you were a fan of um, something and then um, became a, that became part of your dream. Um, thanks to Bobby for saying that you like the pattern on the deer. Another thing that I was playing around with was having a character behind the deer. Um, but I wanted to focus on the animal for the stream. Um, but I think I might, you know, have a character somewhere back here and, um, you know, maybe, maybe they're standing over here and doing something. And then I was thinking, um, 
maybe the pattern on the deer could be reflected in some way to um, on the design of the character. So maybe um, this character has like tattoos or something that's um, in this pattern. This is the character, it's a very rough, rough sketch. Um, or uh, maybe their outfit uh, reflects this pattern in some way. Um, but I'll get to that later. Um, ooh, Anna says um, she wanted to work on a graphic novel idea that th they've been developing for peers. Cool, yeah. Um, I love reading graphic novels. Uh, if anyone has a favorite, feel free to share in the chat. Um, yes, and Amy says that their their dream was, you know, they had a dream of being a 3D animator because they loved, she loved um, Pixar movies. I also feel the same way. I think my, like, childhood dream, my childhood dream art job would have been, um, and still is, you know, definitely, like, Pixar or Disney, just because, um... Other than the obvious, <laughs> they were just such a big part of my childhood. Like I have so many strong memories that are associated specifically with um, Disney or Pixar movies. Like I have a memory of um, going to watch Toy Story uh, 2 with my dad in theaters. And like my memory is that um, I was like laughing really hard. So much so that my dad was like, <laughs> embarrassed because I was like laughing too hard and so um yeah it just goes to show like how powerful these movies are that um you know so many of so many of us have childhood memories that are kind of grounded in that um ooh Stella used to draw mangas on paper with their high school friends um yeah it seems like lots of people liked uh, drawing their own mangas and um, yeah, why not? I mean, I, I do see sometimes that there are those um, You know, I did this today challenges where people end up um, Doodling, you know what they did at each hour of the day and then those things it's like under a hashtag on Twitter sometimes so maybe that's that could be a cool time to flex those graphic novel muscles So um, now I'm just gonna start to play with the color a little bit on this pattern that I have. Um, I want it to blend in a little bit more. Um, I think normally, you know, we try to have things that are uh, high contrast between shapes. But for this, because it's a pattern on the deer, I almost want it to like disappear and, it, and appear very lightly almost like a trick on your eyes. Oops. Cool. Um, so we are almost reaching the end of this stream, but I just want to say thanks to everyone for joining. And I really enjoyed this conversation about, you know, childhood art goals and um, favorite TV shows when we were growing up. I think all of this stuff, you know, ends up inevitably affecting us on our artistic paths as adults. Um, we will be back on the stream um, next week. Then we're gonna take a break after that and then we'll be back the following week. And um, also, if you've been enjoying the music, I uh, just want to give another shout out to Lullatone. They are a awesome um, Japan-based band. Um, they're a husband-wife duo. And um, this is some of my favorite music to just paint to. So you should definitely check them out if you um, like their stuff.
So I was thinking it could be kind of fun to add like a little highlight um, that's also very subtle. And you, you don't notice it. So I want it to be very almost like opaque. If um, you've been also drawing a, a fantastic creature and want to share, um, please feel free to. Um, I would love to see and um, congrats again to Tanya for winning this week's giveaway and thanks again to everyone for submitting. It's always really fun to see um, everyone's imagination coming to life. I think I will add a character in the background, and I think maybe inspired by um, some of our chats around manga and fantasy, um, I might make her a bit more on the fantasy side as well. Um, and I'll be back here again next week, but maybe I'll watch like the first episode of um, uh, One Piece, the pirate show. Um, since, um, or wait, sorry, not One Piece, Full Metal Alchemist, since it seems like there's a lot of fans in the chat. Um, and I love a good manga, so why not? Oh, cool. Thanks for, well, thanks for joining, Stella. Um, I'm glad that the stream could be a chill little session. Um, I'm curious, actually, um, for those who join via my social media, is it helpful when I post right before the stream, or is it more helpful if I post um, like a schedule in advance or something? I'm, I'm just curious about that. I'm playing around with different approaches. Um, yeah, this has been a really fun um, drawing session. I think there's something really relaxing about drawing cute animals. And so here I'm just going to add a few bits of lighting. Um, to give the um, give the antlers a little bit of depth. Like now that we have the vines, I want to draw in the shadows, which you can kind of start to see here. Well, we are almost reaching the end of the stream today. As always, it has been a really fun conversation. Um, I learned a lot about different um, animes. Um, I'm actually really curious about um, life as an anime artist now. So I'm gonna try to see if I can find any like blogs or Twitter accounts from um, people who have worked in that field, in that position. Um, just because I'm curious, like, what is life like, you know? What is the behind the scenes of producing a, um, a manga chapter each week? Um, I think it's always really interesting to see how the art that we love is made. Um, usually there's a lot of um, 
hard work that gets put into it that you know we can't really see so yeah thanks to everyone again for joining this week and drawing along with this um, fantastic creatures prompt um, it was really fun i also really enjoyed seeing everyone's challenge submissions and chatting in the um, conversation that we were having. We'll be back again next week, Monday and Tuesday at 2.30 Pacific time, as well as um, not the next week, but the following week after that. So um, I'll see you then. And in the meantime, um, we've got a great lineup of um, streams lined up for tomorrow's schedule. So um, I'll see you guys all later and um, definitely say hi and share your artwork if you end up um, following along with this prompt. Bye!